These three tools, my friends, have been getting a huge amount of hype on the internet because they have such an amazing promise, the ability to build full apps with only AI prompts. But as the no-code AI guy, let me be the judge of that. So today I'm gonna be testing how great they really are by giving myself 60 minutes to build a full web app and ship it. Let's go. Now before this video, I gave myself a bit of time to learn these platforms, but what are we actually gonna build? Well, I just went in the comments section of one of my YouTube videos and someone was asking, is it possible to create a complete church app with donations, calendar events, etc. So that's what I've decided to build today. Now the first tool we're going to use is going to allow us to build beautiful UI UX designs, basically the front end of this application. And I've talked about this before on the channel. The name of this tool is V0. It's created by Vercel and it's going to allow you to simply use prompts to be able to build out these interfaces. So let the time begin. Let's jump in. So I'm going to come to v0.dev here and I'm going to go ahead and type in just the simple instructions. Build a church app that includes donations and events. It's gonna actually generate the code behind all these pages. It's also going to be showcasing the code as it's building it out right here. And in the preview, as you can see, it's starting to build out these pages. So here on the left-hand side, you'll see it's building out the church app, right? But you're gonna see all the different pages that it does. So I'm just letting it work here. <laughs> just with that one prompt, it's already creating all this pretty impressive stuff here. And then when it's finished, I'm gonna maybe say, okay, this is like the full church app. And you can already see that uh, the donation, we can already put $10 here. There's something functional here. This is where we're really gonna start, right? So it's creating the elements here. Now, of course, this is not where we're gonna like, sort of stop. This is the real beginning. I'm gonna kind of start by saying, okay, great. Always be nice to your AI, by the way. Could you also include a homepage? So I'm gonna start structuring the homepage of this and all of the individual pages as well. Okay, so it's created this first version here. I'm gonna check it out. And of course, we're gonna start changing things. Our services, upcoming events that you can register for. And it's created all this with just one prompt. So now let's say, okay, I want it to be a little bit slicker, this design. So we're gonna let it cook here. And it's actually telling me everything that it's doing step by step. So it's creating a full width hero section with a background image that we can see right here. And we're just letting it cook, make all these improvements just by saying, make it look a little more slick. And now this looks a lot better. And we can already, okay, we're getting to a closer version of what we're looking for. Now we can have specific prompts, things like make the button on the hero section have slightly less rounded edges and we see that it's now applied just that small change and I can start doing that for everything basically. Now when I'm satisfied with this first page I'm going to want to test things out. For example plan your visit. This is maybe not what I actually want to have here. I might want to have the donations button. All these are clickable buttons but there isn't yet a page behind them. So then I'm going to say please create a page behind donations. Look it's creating this page live. It has the donation amount name, email address, card information that we're gonna have to connect to a payment processor afterwards. And all these fields actually work. So then I can choose which cause, let's say missions, I'm gonna donate $10. And then I could put in the card donation, make donation. So the goal here really, my point is that we are going to create each one of the pages and then we are gonna figure out the full navigation of this before we even go to the next tool. And now I'm gonna spend a little time just creating all these pages the way I want them to look. Spoiler alert, later in this challenge, I make an incredible discovery that's gonna completely blow your mind, so stick around. So that took about 15 minutes. I could have been here for five hours, frankly, because it's so exciting and fun to play around with this tool but I need to move on to the next section because we have lots to do. But before that, I wanted to show you guys what I created as the base for this project. So I have three main pages, the home page, the events page, and the donations page. We have an image that I'll put in the background of this. So this is just a placeholder for the moment. We're gonna have an about section with an image here. Then we're gonna have the different services. These are kind of like featured services. Then we have the events. Then at the end, support, donate. So this is an events page when people click on the top to events. I decided to make the top a calendar where you can see all the events. If you click on any one of those events, it's gonna pop up. There's also featured events here uh, with a little bit more description. And if you click on this, you'll also be able to see the details like we just did. And then we have a final page, which is the church donation page. Here, very simple, we're trying to get people to donate. So we're gonna have basically the general fund or a specific fund that people can choose from. Let's say we wanted to give away $100, Joe um, Handy card number 1689 whatever it is and when i donate i created an extra little animation check it out boom confetti let's go so all of this you can do and of course you could spend days or hours planning your project here but the next step is what's going to be even more important in bringing this project to life let me explain. So now that we have the designs and the code behind them, it's time to jump into this next tool. Now, when this tool was released, my friends, it created as much havoc as you might see at Walmart on Black Friday. Now, the great news is that no one got in a fist fight over a television set for this release. The name of this tool is Cursor. Now, Cursor is a code editor. 
And the amazing thing about this code editor that leverages AI to actually manipulate code is that it has this thing that's called a composer. A composer, pretty much, you can type in anything that you want and it's going to code it for you. And so now I'm gonna feed these designs inside of Cursor and we're gonna continue making magic. But before that, I need to set it up and I'm hoping it's not gonna be too difficult. So let's jump in. Okay, so I'm now on Cursor's website. The first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and download for free. Once you install it, it's gonna look something like this. Now, the first thing you're gonna do is go ahead and open a folder. Go ahead, now you're going to create a new folder. Let's call this one Test Church App. We're gonna go ahead and open. And what it's gonna do here is that it's going to open up Test Church App. And as you can see, it's completely empty here on the left-hand side. Now up here at the top, you can open up these two different ones. One is a chat with AI. Uh, the other one is your actual terminal. And if you click on command I, or you can also highlight anything and it'll pop up here, add to composer. Basically composer is where you can adapt things with AI. So it's really cool. And then I'm gonna go inside of the other project that I had in V0. I'm gonna basically go ahead and click on add to code base. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. I'm gonna have to run this inside of Cursor. I will warn you right now, the setup is going to be a little bit tough, but once you do that, you're gonna be able to come in here and basically click here, and you're gonna go ahead and paste, and then you can run this command. So it's basically gonna go ahead and find all of this stuff, and it's going to add it to your app. The first thing it's gonna add, ask you is, um, do you want a new Next.js project? Yes. What is your app project name? Let's call it excellent. Creating a new Next.js project. This may take a few minutes, something went wrong. Okay, now the cool thing here, for example, is that you could do this and then just add it to Composer. Ran into this problem. What should I do? And it's actually gonna start implementing some of these changes. As you see, we're already running into problems here. So let's go ahead and figure out what it is. The good thing is that it's giving me instructions. So let's just follow these. And I'm glad I'm running into these problems because you surely will too. So let's keep going. Okay, so I followed the instructions here and it seems like my app is now here. It's in the process of importing this app. And we did that by running these commands. So basically you can run them inside the terminal. And now my app is starting to show up. So this is great. So I'm running into more problems than expected with setting up this entire thing. It seems like it's not finding specific packages. I'm gonna continue to ask the AI and we're gonna figure it out. Oh boy, that took a lot longer than I expected. I wasted about half an hour trying to figure out how to set this thing up properly, but I finally figured it out and we're gonna be able to jump in the editor and basically keep on building. And because I don't wanna stop right now, I'm gonna reset the timer for you guys. So we are back on track, my friends. We can now go back and continue to copy and paste the pages inside of our project. And then we're gonna be able to start talking about how to actually deploy it. Back to business. Okay, so the issue is that I had an extra JSON package here and it wasn't able to read the other one. Start it all again and now it actually works. So I pushed it to the development server. And now we can see here that we have it live. Let's just say that we wanna replace the image. So what I'll do now is I'll actually find an image that I wanna use. I'll probably grab one from Unsplash. Now I'm gonna to come to the homepage here and I'm gonna find where that image is inside of this and just paste a new one. Now we have a nice little church in here. Now we need to add these additional pages. So to do that, I'm gonna go back inside of Cursor. I'm gonna click on app and I'm gonna create a new folder. So I'm gonna create one that's gonna be called events and inside the events folder, I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna create a page. We're gonna call it page dot tsx so this is where i'm going to actually put this page and so all i'm going to do is i'm going to jump inside of v0 i'm going to go to the events page i'm going to copy all of this i'm going to paste it over there and hopefully it works so we see a bunch of red things here that's pretty normal because there are some dependencies so what i'll do is i'll actually go back inside of this and here i'm going to grab this I'm going to copy this thing I'm gonna go back inside of here and I'm going to click right here and I'm gonna run this. And hopefully that will help us install the packages that we need and the errors will go away. So I don't know what's happening here. I'm gonna delete this and then I'm going to start a new terminal. I'm just gonna go ahead and run this. Now the point here is that you're gonna face some issues. You're gonna face some problems. It's gonna give you some errors and you can actually ask Composer to fix some of those. Sometimes it's able to fix them and sometimes you kind of got to figure it out. Now I'm gonna go into the uh, this and I'm gonna create another page. This is gonna be again under app. Uh, we know that we wanna have a donations page so I'm gonna create a folder. We're gonna create donations now. I'm gonna go back 
I'm going to do the same thing as I just did inside of V0. And then I'm gonna see there's the same issue that I usually have, some things that it's like, it doesn't work because there's these dependencies. So we're gonna go ahead, come back here, come to add coast. We're gonna boom, click on that. Then I'm gonna come back inside of the app and I'm actually going to run this. As you can see, it's thinking and it's gonna ask me to write yes. And then boom, I get a one-time gift, recurring donation, non-monetary gift. Now we can go to the about section. We actually didn't really create this, but I had it just scroll down and I can add um, now a nice little community image here. So if I went back to Unsplash, I'm gonna grab another image, this one right here. If I can just add, ask, could you add this image? Go ahead and paste the image link to the about us uh, section. But this is your AI companion as you are actually building. Uh, the composer and you have to kind of accept um, once you know these are applied you can also reject them if you don't like what it's done uh, but in this case for the most part um, I trust it'll do simple things like this relatively easily and boom just like that I have the image here and as you can see we can basically just continue to um, go through it right this is basically how you build out an entire app I know that this took a little bit more than 60 minutes, but I just wanted to show you guys that it absolutely is possible. And so this editor is where you create the entire app basically. So after you've implemented the designs, you create the functionalities behind everything, then you're going to connect it uh, to the payment processor. There's gonna be all sorts of additional packages that we wanna download for that. Um, and then we're gonna be able to actually deploy. So the third tool here, my friends, is called Replit, and it actually is what allows you to deploy this application to the internet. But as I started looking to deploy this application, I actually realized that the Replit itself has this really interesting new feature, and it's called Replit Agent. Now to deploy my project, I would actually connect both, they would be synchronized, and then I would have to create all the authentication. However, let's jump into Replit and let me blow your mind. So once you log into Replit, as you're gonna see here, now they have on their homepage the Replit agent. So if I come down here, and this is usually just a deployment platform, but now you can actually create and build software inside of this too. So if I put the same prompt, okay, that little animation looks really nice. Go a little bit further down, very cool, okay. Now, the crazy thing about what we're seeing right now is as follows. Since this is the deployment platform, we would be able to very easily go from a fully built app like this to deploy just right here. You could just basically set up your deployment. You want to add these keys. These are all the secrets. So you need to attach it to your database and then you can basically just deploy. Now what it's doing here is probably the boringest and scariest part of building an app. And it is doing all the complicated stuff on the back end to be able to push it and deploy it live. And just like that, it's pushed it live. And now I can come to this app domain and I can connect it to my domain and I can get access to this. Well, obviously there's nothing really for the moment, but I actually built this out in just like 10 minutes in front of you live. So now that we've created a first version of an app and published it, the question remains, do these tools live up to the hype? Let's talk about it. So here are some of my thoughts. Number one, I think that some of these complex tools like using V0, Cursor, and Replit all together can allow you to build incredibly powerful things only with AI. However, they are kind of complicated to set up and there are a lot of technical concepts that you should understand if you don't wanna hit roadblocks that are gonna completely stall you. So for the moment, they still require some learning curve. Don't worry, I got you. Subscribe to the channel. We're gonna be diving deeper into these and making it really, really simple for non-techie people to build this way. Now, my second thought is that platforms like Replit Agents, those are great, but I actually realized that they're relatively simple in terms of what you can build for the moment. And I think that those will also continue to evolve and it's essentially gonna allow you to do one tool, build, launch, and deploy everything. And I think that that's super exciting, right? Another great takeaway I think is that even for someone like me who has a lot of experience building things with no code tools, etc., I think that when you try something new, you have to be incredibly patient with yourself because your own progress and your own belief in the ability for you to do something is actually going to represent in the outcome, right? So be patient with yourself, be willing to learn new things. I've gotten people with absolutely zero experience building incredibly beautiful web apps. So adopt the beginner mentality, you start 
start from where you're at and the most important metric is your own progress. Now I must say that I'm completely impressed with the speed at which these tools have developed. I personally think that no code tools and AI tools combined at the moment are such a powerful duo. But one thing's for sure, I'm gonna continue to uncover the best no code tools and more importantly, help non-technical people build things. AI building is absolutely awesome. I can't wait to see the next iteration of these tools. And as soon as I find more awesome tools, you'll be the first to know. Now, if you found this a little bit overwhelming and you'd like to start by building out an app the easiest way possible, then check out this video because in this video, I teach you the easiest way to build an app with no code tools. Check it out right here. Subscribe to the channel. Let's go.